Hello, and welcome to Podcasting as Praxis. I'm James, and there's no David this week. He got into an argument about Keir Starmer and had to go for a lie down. So I'm taking over uh, pod dad duties for the week. <laughs> and joining us this week are Rob. Hello. Alistair. Hello. Jamie. All right. And two very special guests this week. Uh, we have Liam. Hello. And Roz. Howdy doody. God damn it, dude. <laughs> <laughs> so you may you may recognize Liam and Roz from the podcast, Well, There's Your Problem. Um, and Dave. Yeah. 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 Yeah, Alice is currently recording her Bond podcast, which is why she's not here. <laughs> we we also don't have any sort of synchronization between the three of us, uh, which is why uh, this podcast is being recorded two hours later than we said it was, because that's our fault. <laughs> <laughs> We're just happy to have you here, no worries. Like, Thank you very much. Well, um, so the reason the reason we got you both on tonight is we're gonna do we're gonna do a little special. We're gonna do a retrospective of Brexit, not in terms of all the things which are you know terrible about the process and why it was a bad idea. We're not gonna we're not gonna relitigate that too heavily. Instead, we're just gonna look at the things that tell us that Britain is a deeply cursed, mentally unwell island in the sea. But uh, before we get to that, Rob, you've got you've got a few kind of brief highlights of things in the recent news, don't you? The news, yeah, nuggets. yeah. I just, <laughs> I, I wanted to get away, uh, you know, especially since we've got guests, I thought we'd brush up on our international news and bring, you know, a flavor of the rest of the world. So the first thing I'd like to say is um, meet Marty, the new robot. Um, Marty is a new supermarket robot uh, oh, that weighs. <laughs> <laughs> that's just that's uh, all you have to say. It's the fucking worst. It's the fucking worst. Yeah. Uh, Marty weighs 140 pounds, costs 35,000 US dollars, and drives around supermarket aisles, aisles wearing googly eyes. And when he notices spills or other trip hazards, he can use the uh, supermarket tannoy system to shout at, cu- at supermarket workers that they really need to come clean it up right now. Karens have been automated out of a job. <laughs> I actually, I am from where we both are, uh, from the supermarket chain that gave you Marty. Is <laughs> really? Giant. Oh, fuck, you've seen yes. one. So I have, oh, son, I was in the beta test of Marty. <laughs> Marty and I go way back. Fucking private <laughs> every time, key to get into that supermarket. Every time I will, I will stand in front of Marty and block him, just you know, for a laugh. Because I fucking hate the thing. It's it's ridiculous. Uh, what supermarket chain has? Which one over giant. here is it? Giant. giant. Oh, it's okay. giant. Yeah, yeah. The one in the one in York near my parents' house had like one of the first buy of Marty's. Uh, oh it was God. fucking horrible and they hadn't got it quite down right so it would just sort of bump into aisles therefore making more work for the employees <laughs> and, you just, and then you know you, you obstruct Marty and it's like please do not obstruct Marty he has many places to go and it's just like they put googly eyes on the fucking thing you know so Black Mirror is a little friendlier but no absolutely fucking hate him absolutely take every opportunity I can to obstruct him Tell him he's an asshole so, real loudly in front of the kids. Complain about the surveillance state. So he's a hundred and forty pound Roomba with like cameras. And, eyes. Yeah, it's not even. I, it's not even as good as a Roomba because apparently it's it, it's operated by like a minimum wage worker in the Philippines or somewhere. Yes. Oh my god. <laughs> Jesus <laughs> Christ. Just, yeah, it's yeah, not just, autonomous or anything. It just sort of wanders around and fucks up. I'm confused, yeah, just for everybody like, on the on the pod who hasn't seen one, and um, we'll put a link, we'll put a, a a photo in the show in in the show Twitter thing. Um, I'll put one in the Discord now for you, so you can have a look at, at Fine Marty here doing. Double oh my Marty. god! Oh Jesus Christ! I because I, I feel like there are a lot of good reasons why you might have a robot in a supermarket to like help an elderly person with their shopping mm-hmm. or something like that. This robot just seems to create more work for everyone. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> uh, someone That's... someone posted when when it, when it came to light on Twitter this week. Someone posted like a a photo where it had knocked a jar off a shelf and then run over the jar, <laughs> smearing like fucking peanut butter all over the aisle, <laughs> and, and, and then, then yelling at the yeah. employees about it. <laughs> <laughs> this Still, is your Ian, fault. You I made me nice. do this. I'm telling yes. you, I'm telling you think you. I like it when I hurt you? I'm telling you. Well, well, automated I'm, I'm... bullying. Yeah. I'm just picturing like welcome to City Seventeen, pick up the can citizen kind of, <laughs> except done by a, a really insane looking supermarket robot. Why the googly eyes? Oh my god! To make it, it more humanizing. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's to humanize it. Just d- deliberately to annoy me is what I would say. Why the googly eyes? <laughs> yeah, I feel that. My oh, um, Jesus. my comment on this is the same as when they had that fucking police robot that was just like an orb that like rolled around spying on people. And or the one, the oh, one in yeah. The yeah. one in Georgetown that committed suicide. Oh, there was that one as well. Yeah. Um, <laughs> the, the thing is, science fiction is always like, um, you know, always all the, mach- the the machines rolls up to to defend themselves against human aggression, but it, it neatly ignores the fact that every single robot we've ever built has it fucking coming. I mean, they're, ba- they're, they're, they're like worse Daleks. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, I'd, I'd, take, I'd take a Dalek over being sh- uh, like that, shouted that at is, by a thing is, in the... That is actually exactly what it is. It's a Fisher Price Dalek. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, to me, the amazing uh, thing is like these things cost. For now, they cost uh, thirty-five thousand US dollars a piece. So, like, for that money, could you just not like employ? I don't know what the fucking minimum wage is in that area, but like, you could probably employ like four or five people um, to just stack shelves and clear the aisle where necessary. You know, humans. Yes. Well, <laughs> just, thirty thousand. It's two minimum wage employees, yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. Tom's well, the number those, of robots you got. Yeah, those those two minimum wage employees should hire a lobbyist. <laughs> <laughs> if only they did that. What if they yeah, hired a robot? This, yeah, this, robot this. lobbyists. <laughs> <laughs> They've automated the fucking lobbying process. They're all robots now. Mm, no, no, no. All the all the lobbyists who are pro robot have convinced themselves that the last jobs will dis- that will disappear are lobbyists because they're convinced about the human touch. I I'm pretty sure it would it would be very easy to automate lobbying. You just have to have one of these supermarket robots go just into a congressman's Joe office Manchin. and <laughs> yeah, and 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 just like tell them the same thing over and over again. You just I, play I, a pre-recorded I, message. You'd honestly rather have the robot, right? Because maybe the robot's got lasers for hands or uh, <laughs> lasers for eyes, I should say. Joe Manchin, you know, is uh, on the fence and it just gets his face melted off like the end of uh, Raiders. You can watch that movie. <laughs> I mean, if lobbying in the US is anything like lobbying in the UK, all you have to do is send like the person you're lobbying like a, a really nice like um, invitation to like, uh, like a, a minor sporting event, and they'll be like, "Oh shit! Of course, of course, I'll try and eviscerate like workers' rights." Well, that goes without saying. No, no. What you what you what you do is yes, uh, this exactly is actually like this that. is from I think yesterday in the European Parliament. What you do is if you're a giant uh, European chemicals conglomerate called BASF, is you send uh, all the relevant MEPs uh, six half bottles of Portuguese wine, and you do an online wine tasting, and everybody votes your way. That's literally what just oh, happened. Half bottles. Half, half bottles, yeah. Bottles. Half bottles, yeah. Come wow. on, have some respect for yourselves. <laughs> they Setting have plenty of respect for themselves. <laughs> they just don't have respect for the politicians. I, I, uh, uh, gotta right, let yeah, them know enough, their place. Fair enough, fair I, enough. I assume, that's, that's a good point. I assume half bo- a half bottle of wine is some high society thing that I'm not aware of, because to me, a half bottle is something you try and kill someone with in a bar fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We speak the same language. We're not so different, you and I. <laughs> Liam oh, and Jamie God. are two sides of the same coin. <laughs> okay, I'm going to try and drag us vaguely back into the plan. Uh, Rob, what else you got? Yeah, uh, well, speaking of lobbyists, um, there was a piece in The Guardian via the Bureau of Investigative Journalism, who are actually really fucking good, uh, as that British American Tobacco has land- launched a new £1 billion advertising campaign for e-cigarettes and a new version of Snooze, with the slogan, yes! The Better Tomorrow. <laughs> I just want to come back to you real quickly on the fact that you call Bureau- the Bureau of Investigative Journalism good. Uh, I'm going to challenge you on that because they allow Jimmy Bollock in. Ah, okay. 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 Yeah. No. Fair, fair, fair dues. They yeah, are for, for for our American guests. Jimmy Bollock is a journalist and twat. Mm. <laughs> Not, is that nominative what? determinism there? Can, or? He, can he talk? Like, is it a talking sort of vagina deal? Like some sort of puppet of some kind? Or is a human Esen- man essentially, called James yeah. Ball? Yeah. <laughs> Allegedly human man. So anyway, Rob, you were saying. But yeah, <laughs> the something new about something to- about e snooze. Uh, oh, no. <laughs> the How new Better work? Tomorrow uh, campaign of British American Tobacco is essentially fully targeted at young people from roughly fourteen and up. Um, Everything old is new once again. 
yeah, through <laughs> through essentially through social media influencers and sports stars. And apparently, like one of the big target countries is Kenya, and where one of the firms that was engaged to do like local coverage grew so concerned that a journalist was actually going to expose what they were up to that they offered, I think, on film to bribe the journalist, <laughs> which is an amazing <laughs> pro tier move right there. Yeah, they're not afraid of shit. I like that. <laughs> I mean, we live in a consequence free society. I say cons consequence free for like the elites, I suppose. Yeah. Well, I think it's more of a journalist isn't afraid because I'll be totally honest. There's not a great track record of you know journalists exposing the corruption or, and like you know bad moves of major like you know British and American firms and like living to tell about it. To be honest, so like hats off to them, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. The the the, the caption of one of the TikTok videos uh, published under this Better Tomorrow campaign in Sweden features uh, new hypermodern uh, snooze pouches. And reads every basic bitch in Sweden between the ages of fourteen and twenty-three, while <laughs> prominently featuring BAT's fine products. <laughs> that, is, that is a fucking that's, amazing that's, strap that's line. That's stupendous. That's stupendous. <laughs> I, I, as someone who uh, who has been known to use snooze in my day, I gotta tell you, if someone advertised to me as, "Do you want to be a basic bitch?" I'm not sure. <laughs> I'm not sure if that if that uh, ad camp. I guess it's not targeted towards me, but I always laugh because uh, over here in the states, we uh, uh, if you want to get the good shit, you got to import it from Sweden. We have uh, camel snus and uh, and uh, skull snus, which are laughably bad. But ever since Jewel took off, they've been they've been trying to cram pouches full of nicotine, uh, and I I always I always laugh because you know a lot of the Swedish snuses will hit you at you know. 20 milligrams or so worth of uh, nicotine or, or as high as 43 in Siberia's case. And then these ones are like, oh, two, two milligrams to six milligrams of nicotine. That's the strong stuff. And I'm just like, what in God's name is Sweden doing? <laughs> How? <laughs> they just, I always picture this lab of like incredibly hot, like six, two Swedish women with just like hypodermic needles, jamming pouches full of nicotine. <laughs> That's the that's the reality it's, I it's choose. It's just like to the forever with. night, I think, is what does it. Just like no sunlight for years, and then you just all you have to do is just jam nicotine into your eyeballs. We're gonna get letters <laughs> from the Swedish tourist board here, aren't we? No sunlight for years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, my my favorite bit about this uh, this advertising campaign, apart from the basic Swedish bitches. Um, is that Formula One sponsorship currently bans all tobacco advertising. So that was agreed. But it's only referring to tobacco. So smoke-free products like e-cigarettes and snooze are fine yeah. to advertise. So they just Amazing. are back in the fucking uh, uh, BAT pocket. Which yeah, I you can munch on tea bags amazing. to your heart's desire. Mm. Is, isn't snooze made of tobacco, though? Uh, yes, but there yeah, are but now... No Oh, yeah, okay. There, It'll still give you plus, horrendous there, like mouth cancer, though. Don't worry about that. No, it doesn't. No, it doesn't. We don't know <laughs> the science about nicotine. Okay, think of nicotine as just really, really addictive caffeine. There's the as far as I know, Sweden. While they require the warning labels, the science actually doesn't know whether or not nicotine itself, independent of tobacco, causes cancer. I, I mean, I'm sure it probably does. But uh, I, I mean, we'll find we'll find out in ten years. You know, yeah, yeah, about I'll ten let you years know. after. Uh, British <laughs> yeah, in ten well. years you can I come like back the on the idea. podcast, Liam. <laughs> there there like, are go on. This concept of F one can can be sponsored by smokeless tobacco. What this means is like I don't know. Grizzly or like Cope or any of these extremely yes. redneck brands <laughs> cannot sponsor yes. NASCAR, but they can sponsor Formula One. Oh, superb. Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> oh, that's going to be. You wouldn't watch that. You wouldn't watch Roseburg fucking clown around the track in the grizzly car. You would absolutely do that. Watch Hamilton go flying through the air because the Kodiak car let go a little too early. You'd watch that shit. I would wake up to watch the whatever Grand Prix at 4 a.m. if I knew the Copenhagen car was going to cause chaos. <laughs> to be fair, to be fair, it is not hard to limbo under the bar of being more progressive than Formula One. <laughs> Oh, Jesus.
Uh, but yeah, so that's, I mean, that's essentially, uh, you know, some, something good to, to look out for. <laughs> Smoke-free alternatives coming to a neighborhood near you. Currently <laughs> making British Americans back on nearly £9 billion a year pre-tax. Wow. Cool. Holy shit. It feels like we've got two members of Big Tobacco one today. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that's it. Listen, listen. I, uh... <laughs> yes. <laughs> As a Jewish man, my job is to ensure that you filthy goy are doing what we tell you to do. <laughs> Thank you for your cooperation. Now, if I can send anyone a sample pack. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm glad to hear that Will Pairs Your Problem has managed to get at least one third of the podcast sponsored by a big corporate investor. <laughs> I'm uh, trying to get buysnews.com to sponsor us because I think it'd be funny. And they just, they're like, oh, you can join our affiliate program. I'm like, no, motherfuckers. No, not affiliate program. <laughs> like, Give me the real shit. That for like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Oh, yeah. God. I mean, on the other hand, if there are any employees of British American Tobacco listening, or Raytheon, or some other cool <laughs> bunch of clowns, then we are more than open to sponsorship. Oh, yeah. Could you imagine Podcasting's Practice sponsored by Raytheon? That would be amazing. <laughs> I, I would do that shamelessly for about one episode and just, like, totally revel in it. And then and I'll probably kill myself. But <laughs> well, I, I, I do have a, uh, in, in, in the third and sort of last quick story I want to touch on, I do have maybe another sponsor for us. Uh, it's a lovely company in the US called Enbridge Energy. And they are building uh, a new version or another version of the Keystone Pipeline, uh, which is going to bring lots and lots of lovely tar sands oil through Canada um, and into U.S. ports for global distribution. Thanks, Obama. You're welcome. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> yeah. So if you remember, the Keystone Pipeline was one of the really big like environmental pieces, and Biden did, I think, last week sign an executive order banning the building of the, that pipeline. This pipeline, though, is one of four others that essentially fulfill the exact same function. Have they just stuck a big mustache on the pipe? Yes. <laughs> this Quite is a royal pipe this... fine. <laughs> I mean, not uh, a lot this... of people live in the uh, rights away being impacted. You got, you, got, you got your choice of places to build the pipeline. It doesn't have to be Keystone XL. <laughs> No, no, no. This one, fortunately, uh, runs through a wholly different set of Native American indigenous lands. Um, <laughs> Damn it, dude. <laughs> uh, oh. It runs through, uh, currently, its sections being built in northern Minnesota uh, on the lands of the Lake Superior Chippewa tribes. And they've used that lands for hundreds of years to forage for wild rice, which is an essential element of their culture. And right now, obviously... Building a new pipeline is not exactly doing that uh, ecosystem any good. Um, um, Enbridge Energy, by the way, don't worry about it. They've got a great track record. Um, from 2002 to 2018, um, they only had one pipeline incident every 20 days. So, like, oh, that's not that much. <laughs> um, they were also responsible for, in 2010, for the Kalamazoo River spill. Uh, which filled a tributary of that river with nearly 1 million barrels of crude oil Jesus. Um, you know, in about 48 hours in 2010. Now, they did mainly clear that up, I should say. Unfortunately, the type of oil that spilled there was really heavy. So while the shoreline was rel relatively clean, the entire riverbed oh, is Jesus. essentially covered in bitumen. Oh, um, gosh. <laughs> For, for anyone so, who doesn't yeah, know, uh, bitumen is basically the major component in, like, tarmac. Uh, it is nasty shit. <laughs> mm. Yeah, so we've essentially created a tarmac riverbed, uh, which which maybe we could do racing on. That'd be cool. <laughs> just we fucking can do, pave, uh, yeah, <laughs> pave the rivers, baby. Let's go. Just pave, pave the, the earth. <laughs> Going to do some flood control. If you pave the riverbed, then it's a handy place to drive your Tesla when it catches fire. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and that's why we can't stop digging up all the oil because we've got to pave all the riverbeds. Let's go. Well, weirdly enough, we may be returning later on to paved seabeds uh, for our, our, <laughs> our discussion about Brexit. Um, ominous yeah. portent, Jesus. I suppose. I suppose that's that's. We've had our appetizer. I suppose we should get to oh, the main be event. Before, yeah, sorry. before we get Wait. off the news, um, can I just say in relation to current events, if Elon Musk ends up going to jail for like drug crimes, I will laugh my crabs off for a full week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, God, we might we might have to cut this bit, but um, yeah, this people... is going to be. We're going to have to like after every sentence say allegedly. Oh, David, just like David's not here. We can do all the libel we want. <laughs> 
<laughs> um, <laughs> you have Americans, Americans on the so podcast. We can do the, we, yeah, yeah, we can protect we, we you. We can do the libel. Just tell us to say it. And <laughs> 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 yeah, so apparently Elon Elon Musk's been using the Boren Company to dig tunnels for the cartels. I think that was I think that was what I was told. <laughs> Holy that, shit! <laughs> see, this assumes their tunnel boring machine is that good. Yeah. <laughs> well, does it? Like, you know, if I was a cartel, he's, he's, dug, he's dug a cupboard for the cartel. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, surely, if I was a cartel, I would take what I could get. And you know, Elon Musk does have a kind of energy, allegedly, of a guy who seems like he would like do something incredibly stupid, like get into bed with Mexican cartels, allegedly. Oh, he a- he's get- absolutely allegedly. that guy. Does the cartel have the expertise to operate a, a, a tunnel boring machine, though? You can learn. No, you can sneak a tunnel boring machine under the U.S. border. Well, I mean, part of his one of his big factories, I think, in in Arizona, um, I think for Tesla is on the border. So I think if he were to do such a thing, which we are no way legally saying that he is doing, but if he were to do such a thing, it would be possible and would also explain, allegedly, if he were to do such a thing, why that company maintains such an extremely healthy cash flow when essentially they're perennially behind building all the cars they're not supposed to build and the rockets keep exploding, allegedly, if that's allegedly. something he was doing. I don't think the rockets allegedly explode. I don't think they actually do that. No, no those yeah. ones actually <laughs> Those definitely explode, explode. Yes. I've seen them on the TV. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Hy- Hyperloop, but for bricks of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> That's just an old timey pneumatic tube system. Like in a bag, just firing it off. Yeah. <laughs> Blowing a fine mist of cocaine into every room in your house. <laughs> yeah. I've heard they're refurbishing the Houses of Parliament in the UK, right? So presumably, is like Elon involved in this at all? Because like piping clouds of cocaine directly into chambers does seem particularly on brand and would explain an awful lot of the shit we're about to cover, to be honest. <laughs> no, I think I think uh, the, the preferred construction method uh, in, in U- the UK Parliament, at least to fill the walls, is nice insulation. Mm, wow, yeah. that's definitely getting excited. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> okay. Right, it wasn't Jamie for once, fucking hell. <laughs> Not if it had been me, I'd have... Called for sensible reform. Oh, for fuck's sake! <laughs> Not that again. Right, okay. All right, so... So, Brexit. sorry, James. James, just one second before you move on, and I'll cut and paste this. But I do want to say it: like the Keystone new pipeline, um, the Pipe Three, I think it's what it's called, um, is actually like it's a fucking crime against humanity, if nothing else. And there's a lot of stuff being done. There's currently water protectors and environmental activists in the path of the pipeline, like the war against. Um, the other one, like Keystone, so like if you want to support that, if you want to help them, if you want to donate, we'll put a link um, in the show description or uh, we'll go to their website, which is called stopline3, three, three as the numeral, dot org. So go there and help out if and when you can, because they really need some fucking support. Awesome. Right. Okay, cool. And I suppose then, Brexit, we, yeah. Yeah. Th- there's a lot of us, there's a lot of us happened. And um, for those for those listeners who maybe are American or have had you know no reason to pay attention to this, uh, the Brexit referendum took place on the twenty third of June in twenty sixteen, and it was a vote to leave the European Union. A lot of dark money poured into the election. Um, some very false claims were made. I don't know. Maybe people remember this. There was a there was a big Brexit bus, big bright red bus that said three hundred and fifty million a week extra for the NHS if we left Brexit. Um, which was a total lie. It was completely false. And uh, it was pushed by a little known guy known as Boris Johnson. Um, so, you know, hopefully he didn't really amount to much after that. And he, he got I, his come up. I think he, he just, he was he just like, just desserts, right? I think he, he was mayor of some little town. I, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> some, somewhere in Shropshire, was it? Yeah, London, Ontario, yeah. I think. <laughs> yeah, somewhere in Ontario. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, we're not gonna we're not gonna relitigate Brexit tonight. Uh, um, I think everyone on here can agree it was broadly a stupid idea. Um, it was so stupid that internationally, uh, yeah, a few months later, when America elected Trump in November of the same year, many commentators kind of took this as a sign that America had to always one up every dumb decision. However, it's true. Well, it's see, here's true. A, I, I disagree. I think that as I hope tonight will show. Britain is fundamentally a sicker and more brain damaged nation than America because at least you guys got rid of Trump. We're still living with Brexit. 
And so, uh, so with that in mind, Rob, why don't you take us through some of the cursed highlights that just show yeah, you what our culture is like? Actually, it was if it was difficult. Some of the bits I had to drop because they were too like visual for for a podcast medium <laughs> were um, <laughs> EU Supergirl, uh, which was fucking horrendous. Um, there was a whole raft of songs which were horrendous. But the thing I wanted to start with, I swear uh, to Christ, if you've included any of the fucking like anti Brexit songs in this, I'm going to murder you. No, no, no. That's that's not that's uh, WTTATW has has got you covered there. If that's songs are your mm-hmm. more more your sort of thing. They um, are, but they are very much not. <laughs> <laughs> now, the first thing I wanted to talk about, uh, because this was pretty fast after the referendum, was uh, the so-called Londependence petition, uh, where 180,000 people signed a petition a for London. Name. I know t- for for London to become a city state. Oh boy! I mean, this is almost as stupid a name as a pending exit onto every single fucking thing that like leaves another thing. But yeah, yeah, this. Uh, this was started by a couple of. We, we have a particularly diseased tribe. We have many disease, disease tribes, tribes in British politics, but one of the most cursed and diseased is um, uh, politics professors at universities who are all intergalactically fucking stupid. Um, and, a, and a guy who was an editor at Gizmodo UK, which I thought was amazing, uh, who urged that the London mayor, Sadiq Khan, should become President uh, Khan. This, I mean, this is incredible because this is like the the some of the worst people in Britain. Just and it's guaranteed to what like rile up the other like worst people in Britain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, it just just for for our guests to to understand, like the people who really wanted Brexit were fundamentally broken, stupid, red faced gammon fucks. The people who really wanted to <laughs> remain were maybe worse. Yeah, there's certainly. More I thought obnoxious. I thought we were a Romaniac podcast mm-hmm. here. Yes. Oh no, this this is the <laughs> Romaniac, sorry. <laughs> oh, they've they've actually re fucking branded now, haven't they? I can't remember what they're called now, but they're not called the Romaniacs anymore, which no, is quite they're... Yeah. Quite a canary in the coal mine of that ideology. British version of uh Muller she wrote. Um <laughs> oh. which we're now bigger than on on, on Patreon. <laughs> Suck it. <laughs> Yeah, we're, we're for Tony Blair's third way, which is Britain should leave the European Union, but be like bulldozed into a, a featureless <laughs> void. <laughs> <laughs> you know, at this point, you kind of deserve it. Now, the uh, one of the best things I found was that the uh, the author of the, the petition, he was interviewed in some fucking magazine, um, he said, quote unquote, about this London independence, there's recent political precedent too. When Kosovo controversially declared independence from Serbia, uh-huh. it wasn't on the usual <laughs> basis that there had always been an independent state, but just that there was a separate community there, and that in itself justified it. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> London famously not like you know what I mean, just distinct from Britain, isn't it? In the minds, in the minds of like you know mad people who who say it, like you know it's it's Lon- Londonistan. Where you can't go, you can't go thirty seconds without being knife crimed. Those people, they all believe London is a distinct culture from the rest of the UK. You know, you Let's wouldn't have so no much knife zones. crime if you had guns legalized. Yeah, know? that's exactly this right. Is, this Jesus is very Christ. true. <laughs> <laughs> what enough with this halfway shit? Commit, you fuckers. <laughs> Look, my dad's already a fucking prepper. I don't need him to be even further. Oh on. no! <laughs> Hang on, wait a minute. Your dad's a prepper. Like, oh, fucking pause. Right. <laughs> so <laughs> pretty much. Wait, does your dad live in the UK? Yeah. What does a UK prepper look like? Because I know uh, what US preppers look like. But... Well, he's got two shotguns, like legally licensed. Uh, I don't remember how many hundreds of rounds he's got for them. Uh, he's got like a hundred liters of water at least. Possibly what? more. Um, <laughs> literally, oh, literally. That's not that least, much. Uh, yeah, I know, but like, no. look, 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 this is this is these are the facts, and you make of it what you it's will. It's quite a lot. It's quite a lot when you have to carry it all from Tesco. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and he's got like a hundred kilos of food or something ridiculous under his under his stairs. Yeah, um, he, he's he's ready for something. I don't know what though. Is he? Is he one? Of, it was, so was he pro or anti Brexit? Because I'm, um, I'm trying to work out if he's one of those like uh, Brexit preppers. You know, all the people that were buying like 400 tins of beans because 
the the at midnight the 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 night we left Europe officially like we just revert to the Stone Age and like <laughs> gangs mean, of, like is... beasts would be roaming the streets. <laughs> I mean, the thing Although is, to be fair, it doesn't seem that far off. <laughs> I mean, the thing is, my dad he's like he's not like super pro Brexit or super anti Brexit. He thinks Brexit is broadly a bad idea, but like he's just perpetually prepared. You know, scare quotes around prepared for everything to fall apart. I guess. Does he um, read the Daily Mail or something? No, he watches a lot, of, lot of like CNN on YouTube and shit though, because uh, he he is one of those people that loves to hate Trump, but he's not like a turbo neolib, I guess. I don't know. He's my, he's, a, he's a he's a mosaic of a person. What can I say? <laughs> All right, Alistair's dad, a land of contrast. A land of <laughs> contrast. Yes. <laughs> oh, but yeah, Jesus. I mean, just the 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 fucking sadism of of. L- people from London who were exactly saying, you know, some of the quotes from that, I had a brief look at the petition, even though it's now closed, um, that they said that they felt as Londoners, they felt morally, culturally, and historically closer to Paris, Brussels, and Rome than I feel to Sunderland. Um, what, what a which... cunt. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck what? Sunderland. How dare you be from like the north of England? <laughs> I mean, do you know what I mean? Historically, like, as a Geordie, historically, not famously getting along with Sunderland, but I will happily fight that guy on Sunderland's behalf. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, this, yeah, I was just saying, that's sort of, this is emblematic of the entire fucking, you know, Remainer, Brexiteer dichotomy, which uh, the people who, who were anti-Brexit were just to the core fucking cunts. Like, yeah, it was yeah. it was a lot of, it was a lot of, oh, well, once, do you know what I mean? Like with Corbyn, um, they were all anti-Corbyn. Because mm. why why won't you press the big red button you've got on your desk that stops Brexit, Jeremy? And um, they were <laughs> they were like vehemently anti Corbyn, and people would like people would ask them like we should why can't you just accept that you lost the referendum and like you should vote for Corbyn because we're going to do like you know his his policies would do something for the poor and they would immediately go oh well how are the poor going to feel when Brexit like means there's no food anywhere in the UK and they have to like work for six pence a day and all this sort of stuff and you'd go like right but you don't actually care though do you you only give a shit because it means it's going to be more expensive for you to go on holiday yeah, like theor- theoretically if there were policies in place to make Brexit not that bad then you wouldn't have all the Brexit problems, right? Yeah, 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 absolutely. yeah. But not in the minds of these people. In the minds of these people, the second we're no longer part of the European Union, like hell itself just erupts from the street. So just, just for the, just for the benefit of uh, Liam and Rods, like, so there was a, a part, a small group of MPs left the Labour Party because uh, Jeremy Corbyn's position on Brexit was untenable. Basically, like, broadly, that's what it boiled down to, sure. and these. MPs were instrumental in ensuring that when there was a bunch of votes in Parliament, uh, basically determining what kind of Brexit there was going to be, um, the one vote that came closest to um, actually passing failed by what some like four votes or something. Yeah, it was were, something like that. Yeah, and there was like nine of these MPs, and they abstained. So that this this was just to remain in the Euro, in the EU's customs union, which would have avoided a ton of the problems that we're now sort of running into. So these motherfuckers are the exact people that try to make Brexit as bad as humanly possible. So in a way, my thesis of them all being cunts is being borne out. You're not wrong. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna interject here to say we we are a British podcast, so Liam Ross, you do have a C word pass for the duration of this podcast. Just so you know. <laughs> Thank you. I will let my mother know. <laughs> yeah um it was very much a case of like you know we could have had we could have had a, a well-managed soft brexit but to these pricks it was like no we, we must we must have no brexit and everyone would scream at them for like five years that you can't have no brexit you've you've lost that that battle the battle now is to make brexit not a complete shit show and they just would not budge and they lost and dragged us all down with them yeah, but Jamie, Jamie, you know who could have prevented all of this from happening? It Jeremy, like, if he just pressed, if he just pressed the big red button on his desk. No, no, it wasn't Jeremy Corbyn. I mean, he he should have pressed the big red button. But once he couldn't pre- press the big red button, um, it was it was down to to one one frail woman um, oh, who's no. given her life in service <laughs> oh, to this God. country. I am talking, yes. of course, about Brenda, uh, Queen Elizabeth II. <laughs> oh yeah. boy. Oh. 
<laughs> this, oh, this is one of my favourite pieces of like almost esoteric like Brexit law. It's just the stupidest <laughs> fucking shit. <laughs> oh, all right, Rob. Yeah, hit us with it. Uh, yeah, once again, like for our guests, it's important to understand that essentially the UK is a constitutional monarchy, and that means all governments govern in the name of the crown. So once it really got down to the wire, there was a, a, a substantial set of fantasists, I think is the best way to call it, um, mm -hmm. who were utterly convinced that um, Brenda herself was going to step in any moment now and break with centuries of royal tradition of staying the fuck out of politics, um, to, that she would press the big red stop Brexit button. <laughs> Oh my God! I mean, this is the kind of delusion that happens when when you still have a monarch. Um, yeah, glad, glad we we ran away from this in 1776. Never looked back for good reason. Yeah, <laughs> I did. I do remember them trying to like get Queen Elizabeth on board for this, and just we and like it was like how the birdie can still win shit, and you're like, God, now it's just getting sad. What yeah, it kind of feels like? Hobby. It feels more like Q, honestly. Yeah, oh, it is. is. You yeah. have no idea. This is yeah, very high level. When, it's like when when Trump came to visit and the Queen like sat and had dinner with him, and everyone was like, "Oh, but she's wearing this brooch, which is actually a coded message that she thinks she's a fucking prick." <laughs> oh my like, god! Do you know what I mean? Oh, she's having dinner with Boris, but she's wearing this hat that like suggests suggests she's actually thinking of like the Treaty of Versailles or some shit. It was just absolutely like fucking insane theories about like. A woman who genuinely couldn't give a shit if any of us lived or died. Yeah, well, I mean, it's I mean, <laughs> these ha and these these like hats can broadly be described as extraordinarily expensive but mundane. Yeah, I mean, in in yeah. this is particular. It's always nice when Jamie the cuts the grass whisperer. in front of my feet. Um, <laughs> In June of 2017, to some fucking speech or other, uh, the Queen wears a blue hat with some yellow, I don't know, feathers on it or something. Um, oh, that's and that, the EU colours? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's going to save people, us all? And people took this as sort of a divine signal that this hat meant that she was really a Remainer. <laughs> and that she was going to put a stop to the whole thing. Oh my god. I mean, this was essentially part of a whole sort of hysteria that the Queen was going to save everybody. <laughs> Um, and then this is one of our, our other fine columnists writing in, in The Guardian, the sort of liberal paper, which is normally against having a monarchy in the first place. Uh, this is Zoe Williams. Uh, the royals have become potential allies in the rebellion against Brexit lunacy. The queen would never happen, have it. She would be bound to interfere, intervene and prevent a no-deal Brexit. Brenda loves the constitution. It's her favorite thing after the Commonwealth. Your Majesty, uh, welcome to the resistance. That, that, <laughs> that's aged well. Um, I, I envisage the monarch intervening with sound sense while Prince William goes on a pride march and Prince Charles gives Davos a piece of his mind about carbon emissions. Oh my I, god. I, so I, 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 don't, I don't like this oh, idea. I don't like this fanfic. Make the fanfic <laughs> stop. <laughs> why, why is the Queen's favourite thing the Constitution, like, why is the is Queen's it her favorite fucking thing dogs? Like, don't let your job be your whole personality, right? <laughs> it's it's not. Her, her two favorite things are her are, are corgis and horses. Like, this is extremely well known. I, I kind of would argue that the Queen's movie. actual favorite thing is sitting in a fucking giant palace and counting our counting money. <laughs> now, admittedly, I would also enjoy that. Yeah, <laughs> I, I just remember the fucking, oh my God, there was a tweet. I'm not even going to look for it. That was, oh, I'm so excited, and Kamala and Doug are going to come over to Joe and Jill's house, oh, and then Pete oh, and Chaston oh, yeah, are going to oh. crash it and bring wine, and I remember, I literally closed my desktop, shut down my computer, and like went and made a drink. I was just like, I can't, <laughs> like, it's just, oh my god, dude. The the fact I just, I want to know what's going on culturally with all these people who are stuck at about nine years old. And just are like, no, the adults are coming to save a little fucker. No, that was really really horrifying thing. Spiders. I remember that. I remember that thread because it, it, people were like it was some children's book author, and people kept pitching up like suggestions, like, oh, but where's Barack Obama? And all this is happening, and she was like, <laughs> oh, sometimes he comes, but he doesn't like rowdy evenings. He likes sitting at home with Barack a book. Obama is sitting in the corner wanking off while all this is happening. 
This is yeah. um, this is exactly <laughs> like that. Videos. The, the two things that come to mind for this phenomenon for me is that fucking god awful like video of the end of the Avengers film. Oh, but no. all, like every like politicians' <laughs> faces photoshopped in, <laughs> and that fucking that was, that was when, Stephen Colbert, wasn't that, or or Kimmel or something? Probably. Like that ad on American like cable television. How how very <laughs> oh, how very God. cursed. I hate this stupid country. Um, and the other one is that that tweet when Stephen Hawking died about him being at the party in heaven with like Alan Rickman and Prince. <laughs> what? Oh, oh yeah. Oh yeah. And Jeffrey Epstein. Um, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, Hopefully not. We don't have heaven. We just don't have heaven. Oh, the the five the five people you hope to meet in heaven, and one of them is Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> Jeffrey Epstein. <laughs> this raises a lot of philosophical questions, but anyway. <laughs> Oh, God. But yeah, uh, in 2019, Brenda wore the sapphire and diamond Prince Albert brooch um, and a blue dress. Now, this brooch uh, is just... a deep blue sapphire with 12 diamonds around it, which, like, if you squint and turn the image upside down and have a fucking brain hemorrhage, it does sort of look like the <laughs> EU flag. Is it, um, this, uh, these people are fucking obsessed with brooches, because when, when uh, Boris Johnson suspended Parliament, like, you know, illegally that time. Um, one of the one of the justices was wearing a, like a brooch that was a spider, and oh, like and everyone fucking, went mad. Everyone went they? mad over it. It's a fucking brooch, dude. Like, what? Why? Why is brooch. every liberal like this? They, they, you know, all they, all they, all they, they're just children in front of a television going, Those are all my favorite characters, and they're all in my fantasy I'm not, movie. I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly why. So I'm not going to back this up with any kind of reason. But I blame Harry Potter. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was no, thinking yeah, that actually. yeah. Actually, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I, I, I don't have any reasoning either, but that's definitely part of it. It just yeah, feels right, doesn't it? it? <laughs> yes, yeah. it's one of those things I, you said, Jamie. That's just emotionally true. <laughs> like, I, I honestly, I think I could explain that. To be honest, uh, <laughs> like, no, no, for for real, right? So, like, you know, we talked about how they're kind of like they're kind of childlike, and you know, it's. You said, Liam, it's like, oh, the adults are coming to save us, right? And it's kind of attitude. I don't think it is. I think it's more, to them, it's all entertainment. They're all kind of insulated from the direct consequences of all these terrible economic decisions. <laughs> oh, and so absolutely. To, so to them, it's like, they're playing with their dollies. They're playing with their toys, right? And they like watching, tuning in to the children's cartoons and seeing, oh, what are the big figures going to do? And the closest fiction you've got that shows like a, a big titanic fight between like a good event and a bad event that was really kind of, you know, shaping the generation is Harry Potter. So there's like, there's a direct through line where it's like they've grown up reading Harry Potter where they see these big figures moving to fix things, you know, the, the chosen one with a scar on his head and all that kind of shit. And then they see like the fights playing out and then good outcomes. And they're basically applying that to politics on the television and making essentially by proxy making all the figures into their toys, into their dollies, into their Harry Potter characters is why it's the same tendency that leads them to say things like, oh, Donald Trump's a total Slytherin and all this kind of shit, you know? <laughs> James, that James, I just want to expand on that. I think we could do a dialect here. So the thesis is Harry Potter. The antithesis is prestige TV. And yes, the synthesis okay. is liberals, brain spiders. That is where we're at. Yeah, sure. Donald Donald Trump bought his way into Ravenclaw. By the way, <laughs> <laughs> I, I I mean I honestly think that's true. There's so many people who just like you know. There's this trope at this point of sort of liberals just want to get back to brunch and like mm -hmm. yeah. You know, since the election, it's been absolutely true, and I I think you're absolutely right that that for a lot of these people in sort of the managerial class, I mean they're well insulated. You know they might have gay friends, but to them the culture wars are over. Yeah, you know, if yeah. you know, God forbid, someone they know needs an abortion, they can just go pay for it. Abortion hasn't been illegal ever if you're wealthy, mm -hmm. you know. But something like that, and they'll, they'll they'll put these, you know, something that's easy to do, like trans rights, even though they don't have any trans friends themselves, or you know, they'll put Black Lives Matter in their Insta bio and not have any black friends themselves, and not really being able or willing to do the work because to them, politics is just another outlet for entertainment since game of thrones went off the air and i'm kind of sympathetic to them because it's fundamentally from i think it comes from a position of powerlessness they don't really have power over their lives they don't really have the ability to affect anything yeah. um and so they they need these kind of like 
these reifications, these avatars of their desire for making material change, you know? It's the same thing that underlies pretty much all representative politics. It's just taken in a particularly childlike direction, I guess. Wrote London style writer at the time, Sally Hughes, about the brooch. Truly, Elizabeth II's trolling through fashion could inspire an assassin. What? Can I just ask what? these people to what? stop watching... <laughs> <laughs> just no. stop watching their fucking uh, CNN like uh, superhero movies and just watch something else like uh, Dragon Ball Z or something. Because I mean, at least that way, the rest of us don't have to deal with the outcome. Imagining they 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 managed to interview Lee Harvey Oswald. Why do you do it? And he's like, I didn't like Kennedy's suit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> didn't didn't like his hair. Surely he did. Yeah, I didn't like the hair. Yeah, it was. I was inspired by uh, a brooch. <laughs> oh god well, I mean, can, we, anyone else, can anyone else remember that horrendous tweet where the guy was like oh it feels like America just tossed the ring into Mordor and destroyed Voldemort's oh Horcrux god. and the oh Infinity god. Stones and the, yes. just a huge list of like of cultural touchstones for the guy I think that was in response, must have been in response to, the, uh, to Biden winning the election yeah I can remember I, that I, I'm just I, desperately Threading a knitting needle into my ear to make sure I never remember it ever again. <laughs> uh, right. Okay. Enough. Enough about avatar politics. Yes. Uh, like, yeah, let's, I, let's move on. No, I wanted to. I wanted to like make very, very clear that like the the insanity really was not just on the side of of the people who wanted to remain in the EU. Um, there was a quite a large amount of insanity on the side of the people who wanted to leave the European Union. And as the talks progressed and everything got progressively more stupid and it became more and more clear that like none of the promised advantages were actually going to materialize, um, they too sought refuge in increasingly hysterical fantasy. Now, this is a little bit we covered on a previous podcast, but it's so good. I wanted to bring it back for you guys. Um, this was an article in December of last year called 10 Ways to Make Brexit a Success. Oh, boy. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> now this is. I mean, you you may be thinking like this has to be about the big stuff. You know, we can have big trade and we will be free to do whatever the fuck we want and and have new laws around nonsing that that don't bind anybody to anything. Um, mm. But really, uh, the, one of the ten great ways to make Brexit a success was buy a second home. <laughs> okay. Uh huh. <laughs> I, I thought you didn't have a concept of property ownership in Britain because everything oh, no, is no. owned by someone else. Oh, yeah. We love property ownership, but it's just like four guys that own it all. Yeah. <laughs> There's like four guys in total that own yeah. stuff. Yeah. yeah and, and, they, and they're all mates and they're all their, um, you know. What is named Ralph? <laughs> all their what ancestors. What is going to be called Ralph? Uh, all, all of their ancestors uh, knew each other all the way back to 1066. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So it might be economically impossible for many, but it's a good time to invest in UK property with record low interest rates are likely to continue. That market is booming, but you have to be prepared to weather the ups and downs as house prices are expected to fall next year before staging a recovery in 2022. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I just went out and splurged on like three houses. I just live in them. I could just do that. I live in three houses at once. Sorry, I'm going to interject here. Um, it House prices are expected to fall next year before staging recovery in 2022. Citation fucking needed. Mm -hmm. yeah. La later in 2022, not straight away. That'd be madness. It's just later in the year. When, when they wake up. This this smacks like all of those economic forecasts for the recovery of Britain that show like just this fucking meandering, abysmal line and then like an almost vertical takeoff. And then you look at those old versions of the graph and it's the same vertical takeoff in the past, just never materializing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then Jesus. maybe maybe yeah, one of my kinda... absolute favorite advantages of making Brexit a success. Uh, number four, suck it up. With... <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, assume we can perfectly predict the future. This, yeah, this is this is about a very particular and very specific national psychosis. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just read you the whole thing because it's it's very difficult really. Um, with no agreement, Britain will be able to ditch EU rules, such as the one that limits the power of vacuum cleaners to 900 watts. <laughs> well, thank fuck for that. If the UK repeals red tape, you'll be able to send a message to Brussels about their regulations and buy a model up to the old 1600 watt limit. 
If we, if we if we Brexit, you will be able to suck up a house cat in your vacuum cleaner, no problem. Yeah, and we're gonna go, we're gonna go back to old, guaranteed. We're gonna go back to old money. We're gonna go back to all imperial measurements, and we're also gonna have all the old light bulbs back. Just I'm just picturing I'm just picturing like you know British housewives like from the fifties with the curlers in, and the the vacuum cleaners just like you know like a, a handle attached to the engine off a jet. <laughs> One of those things they use to clear ice in Russian airports. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's like, didn't they used to? Didn't they used to have this whole thing where you had like the the vacuum cleaner built into the basement and then with pipes running through the house and connect to wall outlets? Yeah, very old, very old models would have that. Yeah, yeah, but that was like a Victorian age thing. I'm all picturing just like having your own like black hole generator in your living room where you could just like if you have any garbage, just throw it into the void of space. <laughs> this is a fun one. You, you you turn it on and all the rats that are already in there get sucked in. <laughs> I was gonna say that your, your vacuum cleaner can be that tube that the jar was used to pick up R two D two. Didn't didn't Dyson leave the UK because yes. of Brexit? Yes, no, because he, of the Brexit that he campaigned for. Yes, he yes. did. Yes, yeah. No, he said he was going to build uh, like new plants in the UK once finally free of EU regulation, and then like halfway through <laughs> the process, didn't happen. <laughs> Um, uh, nope. Moved not only himself but also the majority of his manufacturing to Singapore. Oh, yeah. Well, that God damn. <laughs> Another oh, win. Right. Another yeah, win yeah. for Britain. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, it... oh, definitely. I, I mean, I'm not sad to see the back of him. My only wish is that he'd taken that fucking prick from Weatherspoons with him when he went. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, the uh, so uh, yeah, I I again, I don't know how familiar Ros and Liam are with like all of the insanity, but um, one of the biggest face, uh, quite literally one of the biggest faces in the whole <laughs> pro Brexit um side of things is a the owner of a chain of pubs, basically. Um, affectionately I have, known as I have Brexit. Always team. wanted to go to a Weatherspoons, to be honest. Um, <laughs> Uh, would it's you would a... you like to would you like to go to a um, a pub restaurant where they uh, hand you propaganda for a political campaign because that's what you would get up until until we actually left the EU. Oh, that's, that sounds pretty funny, actually. Yeah, I'd Honestly, probably do that. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah I'd do that. I, well, I... boy, do I have an eating establishment for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, but you guys could have gone to that. Um, what's her name? That that new congresswoman, the one um, who had the bar called Shooters, where everybody got like massive diarrhea because yeah, of... Lord Bobart. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. She tried to kill a bunch of her customers. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, I, 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 you, you, take you win some. Yeah, you take the good with the bad. You know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great! Superb. All right, uh, move, move us on, Rob. Yeah, give us, yeah, give yeah. us another one. Um, for, for again on 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 the leave side, and uh, we can't begin to stress how fucking mad these people are. Um, one of the big initiatives that was gonna uh, in January was started in January of 2020. Is when the actual leave was gonna happen. I can't remember what the date was supposed to be. What they really wanted to, as a symbol to show Brexit, Britain's sovereignty and its new place in the world, is they wanted the Big Ben to do some extra bongs. Oh Jesus! I remember that. Oh my God! <laughs> yeah. So everyone's uh, getting very confused. Isn't that a plot line in Thunderball? <laughs> Everyone gets very confused that it's twenty-seven o'clock. <laughs> 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 that that is how it that is the reason they have Big Ben in London. It's so everyone can keep track of their lives. If you mess with the program, they just all stand around looking dazed in the street. So it checks out. I mean, uh, this, you can, this you was can a, hear it a, from the observatory in Greenwich, right? So you know that's that's how they keep the time everywhere in the universe. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This this was a campaign which I I found several versions of this, but I think formally it was the called... best. The absolute best one was um, Bunga Bob for Brexit bongs, wasn't it? Bung a, like, yeah. a Brexit it, bong it was for actually bung, bung a bob for for Brexit bung a bob for Big Ben Brexit bong. I'm gonna say say oh, that God. ten times fast, but you can't even say it once. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean the, the key the key things to understand about this is like ben, Big Ben's been under maintenance for like I don't know if it still is, but like for three or four years or something. And it was like yeah. a big, it was a whole to do the fact that it wasn't going to ring for like however many years. So, um, yeah, there was a, a, a campaign in the newspapers to raise money to 
temporarily reinstate the uh, the actual bell inside oh, no, no. Big Ben. Oh no, it wasn't oh. just a campaign. There were there was a group of sixty members of Parliament that wanted to make it a law to oh, mandate sake. Big Ben bombs. <laughs> I'm just picturing oh. the contractor. I'm just picturing the contractor inside Big Ben, and they've got like the fucking bell is down, and you know they're you know they're doing stuff with cranes and all the rest of it, and just a guy strolls in and goes, "Uh, so there's a new law, aye, yeah." Uh, says this thing's going to ring in three days, and the contractor's just kind of looking around it all in pieces and back and going, not going to happen, mate. Well, I mean, it's the law. What happens? Well, you'll get thrown in a tower of London, I suppose. I don't know. They didn't, they didn't really specify. You can you just imagine, like, the guy kind of sucking his teeth and going, it's going to cost you a lot of overtime, just kind of <laughs> the practical implications of this. They had to find well, but... the finest hunchback in Europe. <laughs> to ring the bell. No, not in Europe. To, in, in England. No, no. <laughs> no, they wind up having to import him from France. <laughs> yeah, that, that is exactly what would happen. <laughs> to be fair, uh, I mean, that's not the only thing. Uh, if you also remember, one of the other big prizes of Brexit was going to be um, that Britain could go back to having blue passports. Yeah. Um, not this filthy European red commie bullshit, but honest British blue passports, uh, which is now true, but they are being manufactured in, manufactured in France because the UK no longer has that capacity to make those kinds of skilled oh, no, it was tendered. Well, that- <laughs> it was like tendered out, wasn't it? Well, no, hang on. That actually works out really well because you can give, you can just get the hunchback in Notre Dame who's not really doing anything these days to pick up a blue passport <laughs> and come over to ring Look, Big man, Ben. Too soon. Too soon. It's just joined up thinking. <laughs> yeah, the blue passport. I mean, just. That's like oh, one of the yeah. most normal things we've ever done, really, wasn't it? <laughs> let's just let's just set fire to the economy so that we can have blue passports and massive fucking hoovers. But it can, <laughs> but it cannot be overstated that like the amount of emotional attachment that a certain segment of the British public genuinely felt to having blue passports again, like it it cannot be overstated. This is the advantage of America, where no one has a passport or ever uses it. Um, yeah, I, <laughs> I use it sometimes. <laughs> no one's used it in a year now. <laughs> I know. <laughs> now, fortunately, I mean, they were sort of aware that, uh, as Alistair was saying, there were repairs going on, and it doesn't bong at all because of the fucking repairs. Um so an alternative was thought up. Uh, prominent Brexiters drew up contingency plans to the Big Ben bongs. Uh, they were going to play it through a on... megaphone out of a phone. Yeah. Oh, bong, oh, yes. <laughs> bong, <laughs> some guy. <laughs> They, uh, they get Big oh, Ben, who's from Norwich, to come on stage and get in front of a microphone, and Big Ben gives a bong. Oh, pretty close. Um, Nigel Farage and Richard Tice, the founders of the Brexit Party, sub- it did indeed submit plans uh, for a midnight gathering in London, uh, and they had procured, in their own words, quote unquote, an excellent speaker system to do this. <laughs> Oh, just just play the fucking um, Crash Bandicoot theme YouTube video that someone did. To big Brent, the big Big Brent, Big Ben, Big Ben bongs. Oh <laughs> my god! I mean, this is all profoundly stupid. But it, I'm not sure if it matches up. But it's in its own way, it's even more stupid. Um, this was from a little bit earlier. This was October 2019. Um, this was the <laughs> quite literal meltdown of the Brexit coin. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, we were going to, uh, because the Brexit actual date of departure was delayed so many times, um, a coin was made in October uh, bearing the inscription Peace, Prosperity and Friendship to All Nations, um, the f- a new 50p coin. That was Except gonna be those on the continent. Yeah, they yeah. can fuck off. <laughs> they can fuck off. <laughs> yeah, I yeah, think you the have to append, of the... That to your... append that yourself, unfortunately. <laughs> mm. I think the other side was uh, Churchill doing the two fingers up that, like, cunts appreciate so much. <laughs> I, I, you know, I love the, the psychosis of this fucking nation. It's just so... <laughs> <laughs> bizarre and like it's just all these things that do not matter but, but, I, I, but... I don't think i could live anywhere else though i think if you put me in a normal in, you put me in an actual normal country i wouldn't know how to exist it'd be like when bears spend too long at the zoo and they just forget how to be outdoors <laughs> that's how i feel about the prospects of being an expat i'm like no i know my idiot country inside and out just leave me here to die 
no, this is kind of one of I like. I want to like house you for a few weeks over here, Jamie, just to see how you would cope with, you know, not a normal country, but like a functional country. <laughs> just disappear halfway up a mountain and not come back. Yeah, somehow, uh, <laughs> Jamie's, Jamie rocks out with a bunch of uh, curiously procured gold bullion. <laughs> I don't know. Moving moving Jamie to Switzerland would definitely be an entertaining kind of thing. I can just picture him like he comes back with his kind of thousand yard stare and just can't stop talking about cuckoo clocks. Like that's that's the kind of thing I think we'd get. Well, Switzerland's where, Switzerland's where you get Toblerone, isn't it? Ah, uh, yeah. Switzerland and the pound shop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I'd do all right. <laughs> um, c- so these commemorative 50p coins uh, were minted to mark the Brexit occasion, but obviously that didn't happen. Uh, a spokesman for the Department of the Treasury said that the batch of coins bearing the landmark date, uh, because they put the date on it, which obviously was a good idea. <laughs> oh, that was foolish. <laughs> Oops. Uh, would be recycled. Anybody care to guess what this whole adventure cost in terms of printing stupid coins? Uh, well, only 50 pence, surely. 700 million billion pounds. No, Did they consider increasing no. the denomination of the coin the second go around, thereby <laughs> saving them money? Genius. <laughs> <laughs> Turn all of the Brexit 50 pence coins into Brexit one pound coins. Yeah. Perfect. Yes. Duh. Well, what Easy. They could have done. done <laughs> what they could have done to, to save the economy, which is like that thing they're, they're constantly talking about in the US, is to print a one trillion pound Brexit coin. <laughs> <laughs> like that would have just solved so many of our problems all at once. Um, I, keep, I keep telling you, I keep having to remind you that money is fake and bullshit. <laughs> Someone Weirdly call up enough, Boris and tell him that. <laughs> Um, <laughs> uh, British people, British people really need to have actual coins, though. It's like all those people that want like them to to reverse decimalization, <laughs> go back to like the the fucking and, and, and the, the shilling and growth and everything else. Uh, that which would be was you know funny though. <laughs> it was it was confusing, but you had more options for things to wing at a, a referee during the football. <laughs> <didn't you? laughs> But just like bizarrely enough, this wasn't even the first go around at printing a Brexit coin. Um, that what? was in, in, in earlier 2019, uh, where uh, Philip Hammond, the then chancellor, had made serious plans to print 10,000 commemorative collector's Brexit coins priced at 10 quid each. Um, um, Jesus Christ. Yeah, <laughs> that, was bre- that was ditched after uh, he was turfed out of office. <laughs> but then resurrected <laughs> like a few months later. <laughs> Amazing. Oh. Weirdly enough, this is not, and just again, I do want to bring in the psychosis of the Romaniac as well. Um, otherwise, an author whom I adore and have all the respect for, uh, Sir Philip Pullman, writer of His Dark Materials, fucking great, great books, whatever. Um, but he got a bit very upset because he's also a Romaniac, but he got very upset because. The text of the coin, Peace, Prosperity and Friendship with All Nations, um, contained uh, a missing comma after the word prosperity, um, known as the Oxford comma, which is a grammatical thing. Therefore, taking to Twitter and writing to his million plus fans, I think the Brexit 50p coin is missing an Oxford comma and should be boycotted by all literate people. Unfortunately, you can only use the Oxford comma if you've been to Oxford. So that's where the idea falls down. See, this is the issue, is I fully agree with that. Um, yeah, I kind of do, too. Yeah, yeah, so the Oxford comma is absolutely necessary. If you ever had to write an AP style, um, uh, you would go fucking mad, because you can't use yeah. that Oxford comma, which yeah, is the yeah. only thing standing between civilization and chaos, honestly. Also pooping in private. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's the... <laughs> I'll die on that hill, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> the two things standing between civilization and chaos are Marvel's Avengers and the Oxford comma. <laughs> <laughs> do Marvel's Avengers poop in private? I, I wasn't familiar with that. <laughs> I do you? I don't know. I you got to figure Iron Man. You never see anyone pooping in movies. You got to figure Iron Man has some sort of waste removal system in the suit, right? Yeah, but if he's wandering around in the suit in front of you and he does a big poo, right, and it's just like processed <laughs> out, then is that in private? Like, how do we define private here? Well, I mean, it's not really in private. I suppose I think that's a good point. I don't think he poops in. The, I imagine he can pee in the suit. I don't. I don't think he can poop in the. You suit. You don't think I he think poops he, in the suit? No, I think he has to take off the suit. I think the suit is powered by his own shit. That makes the most oh. sense. Oh, 
I don't think there's enough energy in the shit to power the suit. Like biogas, he's just like constantly just like f- f- eating chili and farting look, in look, the suit Rolf, to keep it going. <laughs> do you, do you have any idea how much about how big a biomass digester is? There's no chance you won't be able to. Feel well, it he's again. Iron Man. Mm-hmm. Like I'm sure Elon Musk is miniaturizing one to put in the back of your fucking car <laughs> as we speak. I mean, that's canon. Elon Musk was in Iron Man too. So can you imagine if e- Elon Musk made the Iron Man suit? It would be like a house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Just this fucking enormous thing that you, that you like, and it doesn't stand under its own power. It has to, it has to be followed everywhere by two cranes. <laughs> what the fuck were we talking about? <laughs> and every every time every time you go on Twitter and go, what the fuck is this bullshit? Elon, like a hundred thousand nerds just descend on you furiously. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, there's some good news to wrap up this story about the uh, 50p Brexit coin. Um, three million of them were recoined and released on February 3rd of this very year. So you can look for one in your wallet very soon. Oh, good. There's closure. Thank Christ for that. I haven't seen one yet. Uh, <laughs> we'll have to send you one if we ever get some. Oh, yeah, that's, that yes. can be the challenge coin for coming on this episode. We'll send you a couple of bricks. Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll have to send one to Alice as well then, presumably. Um, I'm no, sure Alice will have a don't reward. Give her surely. One. She just... wanted... She wanted to go on a bond cast. She she doesn't get the rewards. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> I just I just want to because I know uh, we have the well. There's your problem uh, crew on the last bit. I wanted to mention about the psychosis of Brexit is a new idea that came around. I think mainly this week and bit last week. Um, this is a glorious new idea. Um, how do we? You know, Scotland's about to have a referendum, and Northern Ireland's very unhappy. Um, how do we how do we bring this this fracturing nation together? And the way to do it is, according to Boris Johnson, who from what I've read about it is very genuinely serious and enthusiastic about this, is to build a series of tunnels under the Irish Sea that will connect England, Scotland, and Ireland. Um, yes, through the medium of four giant tunnels that meet in a giant roundabout under the Isle of Man. Fucking genius. <laughs> let me let me tell you about you know, did, did you see how well the channel tunnel worked to keep the United Kingdom part of the EU? This will obviously <laughs> also work, right? I also just want to say, Rob, like this is not a new idea. He's had a fucking like Boris Johnson specifically has had a semi in his pants about this idea for uh, for about ten years now. And it was every a bridge. Time... It was a bridge originally. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I mean, the, the underlying problem still exists, regardless of whether it's a bridge or a tunnel, really. Well, like speaking of underlying problems, didn't we dump a lot of unexploded ordnance and nuclear waste in uh, the Irish yes. Sea? <laughs> No, no, that, that. that specifically is the reason why Boris is no longer enthusiastic about the land bridge between um, Northern Ireland and England because of the, I can't remember the name, but there's like a big um, sort of crevasse in the ocean in the Irish Sea where the uh, UK Navy dumped a lot of its munitions after World War II. Um, so that specifically is the reason why he's not enthusiastic about um, the bridge anymore. Uh, but these series of giant tunnels uh, uh, it's called avoid Beaufort's that Dyke. particular trap. <laughs> Sorry, what was that, Ross? Called Beaufort's Dyke. Beaufort's oh, Dyke, Ross, thank uh, you. Uh, yes. Ross, yeah. how, how enthusiastic are you about the prospect of building multiple bridges or slash tunnels o- across the Irish Sea? All right, so I think here here is my opinion as an engineer. Uh, I, I am oh, always in favor of fixed infrastructure, number one. Number two, you would want one tunnel somewhere convenient and you would want to run trains through it right this is the smart thing to do as opposed to boris johnson's crazy dumb dumb stupid thing where he's building four tunnels for some reason i don't i looked at that and i was like well you can't that's not doable you can't do that that's a very it's a very strange way to to, to think about building tunnels <laughs> the roundabout was like three kilometers across or something. I was like, that's, was, not, that's was, not even how you build a roundabout. <laughs> uh, the, the roundabout yeah. would essentially circle the outer edges of the entire Isle of Man. Like, that yes. is amazing. That, that's like, that's like calling yes. the M25 a roundabout. That's, no, that's, that's, <laughs> yeah, like, that, that's, that's eight miles. That's eight miles across the Isle of Man. Uh, so yeah, that's, that's, not, that's not the greatest and most efficient. This is not the most efficient way to build this infrastructure. Even if you want to do the Isle of Man route, which is a legitimate route for this sort of project. Um, 
here's a question you might be able to answer. British real gauge and Irish real gauge, are they the same? No. <laughs> Great. <laughs> yes. <Nope>. Yes. <laughs> I love this shit. <laughs> oh. You got a bit of an infrastructure project on the Irish side at that point. Uh, um, I mean, doesn't doesn't Ireland like at least the north of Ireland, Northern Ireland, have like one railway, and it's like goes from um, like the center of Northern Ireland, to, like slightly yeah, northwest Belfast, of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. They 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 don't have too many trains. Yeah. Um, they're still doing better than us in the United States, but that's not saying yeah. much. <laughs> not very hard. But but weirdly enough, like that there, I I don't know why I didn't bring it up earlier. But uh, this whole scheme is based on a report uh, by a guy who's associated with the British Tunneling Society, which is <laughs> oh, okay, okay. <laughs> this All fucking right. idea was written by a tunnel. <laughs> no, 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 no. This, the the British Tunneling Society is one of the many fronts uh, of Elon Musk's bring his Hyperloop. <laughs> oh Please, my god no. alright so they're not building a rail tunnel is what I'm hearing they're gonna have morons drive cars for 30 miles yeah, no, underwater that's no, gonna be it, fine it, it, no, no, the I, big I'm sorry, British I hyperloop I mean I, I'm sorry I didn't I, I, I didn't make this clear before that the, I, the idea is for this that's why I said at the beginning uh, that we were gonna tarmac over uh, the seabed the idea is for this tunnel to, to be for trucks it's not for trains. It's to, to for people to drive their trucks. God Almighty! I would love to see the ventilation tunnel be larger than the actual tunnel. <laughs> <laughs> they they'll probably end up downscaling it before they build it, though. Just like a, a giant trebuchet to launch trucks across the Irish Sea. Well, that's always an option. <laughs> Just have a big pile of mattresses on the other side, you know. <laughs> I mean, if uh, if Elon Musk is involved, surely they'll use a rocket to move trucks from one side Just to the strap other. Strap it into the truck, yeah. Yeah. Do you reckon? Do you reckon the well, reason it crosses very quickly, but we can't get any of the other bits down? I can only assume that Boris Johnson's got this idea to, into his head like ten years ago because he played like a really good game of Sim City's Sim City Four or something because like. I don't. I don't really understand where the idea of building like an enormous, an enormous, impractical bridge across the Irish Sea could possibly come from. Otherwise, <laughs> here, here, here's a question: If you built this trebuchet, would you would you be able to fling the truck across the strait with the driver in it? I mean, otherwise most... you lose a lot of the economies. Saying no would just be uh, doing Britain down, quite frankly. So <laughs> I think it, I think it depends. I think it depends on whether it's sponsored by Red Bull or not. If it is, then the drivers have to be in there. That's part of the contract. <laughs> well, I think, like uh, roughly speaking, a majority of the uh, the truckers in the UK are foreign or used to be anyway, because they uh, they would come in from the continent and then pick up lorry loads in the UK and drive them back. So uh, right, yeah. So it's you're, you're just. Uh... It's okay. You're, all you're doing is uh, you're throwing a, a couple hundred Polacks through the air every day. Yeah. Yeah, look. <laughs> you, how dare you try and talk Britain down? If Johnny Foreigner needs to go in a trebuchet, he needs to go in a fucking trebuchet. <laughs> well, speaking as Johnny Foreigner, I'm really excited about my one way trip and the Elon Musk trebuchet. <laughs> This picture like 2080 and there's a bunch of minimum wage workers on the east coast of Ireland mm -hmm. loading like tinned goods into a rail gun. <laughs> <laughs> All the like indestructible tinned Christmas puddings just raining down on the ruins of London all the time. <laughs> Wasn't that an actual thing? Or have I have I have I hallucinated that that this was a story from years and years ago? This is uh, nothing to do with the UK, but that there was um... a, a railgun that fired tin goods. I think you've hallucinated. It. <laughs> no, 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 not quite. This is a. It's a old I choose story. to believe it's real. <laughs> no, Are you by a, any uh... chance talking about the Alameda Weehawken Burrito Tunnel? <laughs> no, I'm talking about this is a US thing where they used to uh you know how they do like those canned food drives and stuff um for like uh, uh food aid for like starving nations in the developing world. And one uh, of the yeah. stories well, one of the stories railgun. Well, well we're going to drop the railgun, but one of the stories was is that they they would drop these pallets uh, you know these big pallets with all the food and, and bags of grain and stuff but one of the loads was was around christmas time that they contained actual tins of christmas pudding which tended to like rip free of the big pallet and then like literally rain down on the heads of like starving african villagers crushing a few of them 
Oops. Uh, I, I, lo- I love to carpet bomb the developing Where's... world, but with like less lethal weapons for once. Start throwing Dude, frozen wall, turkeys out of the back of the... <laughs> frozen turkeys out of the back of the plane on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Yeah, we talked about that. Uh, the froze the the flying crowbar. It just you know you just dump a bunch of shit out the back, and that's your new bomber. As God yeah, I mean, is like... my witness, I thought turkeys could fly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if if you've got Elon Musk involved in this project as well, you know the whole rods from God thing. Would could you make like turkeys from God? Is what I want to know. <laughs> well, I'm not going to stop you. Uh... Toss, tossing tossing turkeys out of a satellite. <laughs> <laughs> building, so building a fucking Thanksgiving dinner. Building a fucking space elevator and filling it with nothing but fridges. <laughs> the most American form of charity ever, just eating <laughs> tinned goods at the impoverished. Yes. <laughs> Hope you could catch. See ya. But... Our ground trips have been deployed with the t-shirt guns loaded with Christmas pudding. <laughs> Look, Jamie, Jamie, you have to admit, if the UK had the like military infrastructure to build a railgun capable of doing that, you know they would. Oh, I mean, yeah. But that's a pretty big if. It's not uh, going to be turkeys they're going to be dropping. They're going to be dropping like 200 pound sacks of flour from orbit. You know? That's because the 200 pound, like, steroid turkeys. No. <laughs> that's where I thought you were going with that. It's going to create a crater, a crater everywhere it lands. Which will fill in and eventually become lakes, thereby giving them water. Duh. Uh, good point. <laughs> I really look Rob, forward to Rob like, mentioned. What- Rob mentioned T-shirt guns there, and I just how how much cooler would war be if they deployed gritty? <laughs> oh, yeah. That's us, baby. We could just have the mascot wars instead of actual wars. Like you could have gritty fighting those weird things they made for the for the Tokyo oh, Olympics for the Britain. Yes. Britain would absolutely fucking destroy all comers with Mister Blobby. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Gritty versus Mr. Blobby grudge fight of a century. I don't know. Brilliant. Japan has a lot of mascots. That's the thing. Like, yeah, there's a I lot j- of mascots sheer in numbers. Japan. Yeah, they, sheer yeah, just sheer numbers. I'm worried about them. Yeah, yeah. But, all, yeah, all but of do them, any of do yeah. any of them have a haunted theme park? <laughs> we need to close the mascot gap. <laughs> <laughs> We need, uh, we need a mascot for every individual like street in Philadelphia and Glasgow in order to close the mascot gap. Yeah, that could be pretty good. <laughs> one of my, just just to briefly return to the tu- to the tunnel scheme. Uh, one of my one of my favorite bits is that the 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 tentative name for this is is Boris's burrow, which I think is fucking amazing. <laughs> Jesus, very very funny. <laughs> um, I mean, the idea that people are will be able to con- maintain control of their cars. For you know, how long is it from Northern Ireland to the Isle of Man? Thirty-seven miles, and then like another—that's like ni- ninety-one miles total of crossing, right? And people can barely keep control of their cars from for ninety-one Down the miles. Street, yeah, hope you don't break down in that tunnel or run out of petrol. But like you know, if you had what if you had a, a fire in the tunnel like forty-five mi- miles in, everyone's fucked. <laughs> Well, I mean, all, yeah. all I know is that driving is substantially easier when you're suffering from massive oxygen deprivation. Oh my god! <laughs> yeah, whenever any, whenever anyone talks about like you know, oh, we're going to build a giant tunnel that goes like miles and miles underground and cars can go through it, I always just think as a kid going through the time tunnel and there was just like a black mark down each wall from the exhausts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> one one of the advantages of running trains through the tunnel is that. A, they're electric. B, they sort of self-ventilate because of the piston effect. Can't do that with cars because, you know, they're producing exhaust. Unless we build uh, Elon Musk perfectly cylindrical cars. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. And just, yeah, just perfectly cylindrical cars and we just fire them through the tunnel. (laughs) Out of the rail gun, obviously. (laughs) Assume an ideal, uh, ideal, uh, Spherical car of uniform density. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, imagine it probably will be uniform density when it fires into whatever's stopped and blocked in the tunnel by the end of it. Um, yeah, this is a bit I found in in I think one well, I don't know some kind of engineering magazine uh, at the end, um, which I which I just we, do we do we or do we not have a border in the Irish Sea now? By the way, uh, yeah, yes. we do. Oh, I mean, could you just imagine? Could border. you imagine a checkpoint in the middle of the fucking like hundred mile long tunnel? <laughs> <laughs> oh no! 
Oh. <laughs> what if you have to pee? Don't. <laughs> <laughs> Don't, yeah? Another advantage of the train has bathrooms. Imagine in the customs agents running alongside the car that's just been fired out of the railgun. <laughs> <laughs> Checkpoint Sebastian. It's going to be amazing. Oh, I'm sorry. You need the new blue passport to go through the border. <laughs> you have an old, old not blue passport. Yeah, they I mean, get told to turn into around. The rail gun, into the railgun. <laughs> I mean, no, it's, it's, it's worse than that. They're like they're they're, fi- they're being fired at relativistic speeds, and <laughs> customs agents like, "I'm sorry, you got to turn around and go back down the tunnel." <laughs> Your passport was blue when you entered the tunnel, but now it's a weird black color. <laughs> it's red shifted. <laughs> it's been red shifted. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice, it's got back to the original color. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I mean, I can just imagine like, like the perfect spheres stopping at this border point, and then it's just like, I'm sorry, you have to stop here, and then um, you have to convert your speed of light travel to kilometers, and now back to miles because you're entering the European Union, and they do the metrics differently. <laughs> oh Christ! Okay, yeah. So, okay. sorry, just one last line about this because it's fucking amazing. Um, so, this is from the engineering magazine I, I read. I can't remember which one. Um, this amazing line at the end sources have also acknowledged that it is that it is a Fuhrer bunker project so beloved of the prime minister that it cannot die you know it's a, it's a good sign when someone describes something as a Fuhrer bunker project because only good things have come out of that kind of place i mean i would i would entirely support boris johnson picking a better name <laughs> oh dear right well that one's getting excised yeah. oh god <laughs> so so okay from those great sets, did did we learn anything about Brexit from that? What if we learned? as a nation and individually? <laughs> All y'all need to like burn down your country and start over. Uh, I don't, know, yeah. what, I, I don't yeah. know what else to tell yeah, you. We will be we will be by to reoccupy you. I was about <laughs> I know, to say, I've, I'm, I'm pretty sure we could do a reverse uh, revolutionary war if yeah, you need us to. Yeah, this is for your own good. <laughs> yeah, I've learned I've learned how the Romaniacs can reclaim some of their former glory, and it's firing the new passports out at relativistic speeds. So <laughs> yeah, cool. I'll be honest, I would take President Biden over Prime Minister Boris at this point, which I know is a controversial position because I fucking hate Biden, but like, I think it would be a net upgrade when you weigh it up. Yeah, mm. probably. But like, I mean, that's not saying much, let's be honest. Yeah, I'm not sure. I think it would be, I don't know, I think both options are fucking horrifying, but... Yeah, just hold, but just hold on until 2024 and we'll have Prime Minister Starmer. <laughs> oh my god. Please no. <laughs> uh, well, on, on that cursed note, we're going to finish off with a little game called Comment or Commentariat. Um, for our guests, this game is pretty simple. Um, Jamie is going to read us some newspaper or comments, and we don't know which it is. It's either going to be something written by a member of a commentariat or a comment left on like a newspaper website, and we have to guess which it is, essentially. Oh, so, fuck. All oh, right. Oh, boy. It's okay, we're all very bad at this, so, and <laughs> Jamie has, fair warning, Jamie has never, as far as I know, picked a comment or commentary before, so this is going to be an adventure. I'm pretty sure I have. You make it sound like I never do any work, but I'm pretty sure I've done it at least once. <laughs> it's, it's, it's almost like that's how you carry yourself off on the podcast, Jamie. Mm. <laughs> right, here's the first one. It's free speech. If she's talking crazy, it'll be apparent and she'll be ignored. Why do we have to round up a lynch mob after her? Give, what? Give me comment. I'm also going with comment on that one. Oh, I'm going commentary out because uh, I do not trust our I do not trust our commentary at all. Yeah, I, I don't know the word the, the use of lynch mob isn't extreme enough, so I'm going to go with commentary. Out. Yeah, I think I think it's comment. It was a comment. It was on a new. Yes, York. yes, <laughs> undefeated. Back to back World War champs. <laughs> <laughs> just just retire now that's it you've got 100 yeah, yeah, records it's, it's only yeah. downhill from here one one sorry one I'm, no i'm sorry i'm sorry have you not heard that britain's won two world wars and one world cup you are still behind <laughs> uh, how many super bowls has britain won no let's be real <laughs> oh 55 baby how many world series <laughs> oh yeah. Look, we're yeah. working on it we've got all the kids at school playing rounders Maybe they one day. <laughs> yeah, that was from a New York Times article um, about Marjorie Taylor Greene and uh, belief in like futuristic technologies. 
Excellent. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, Jamie, give us another. What does Megxit tell us about the world, if oh, anything? For fuck's sake. <laughs> listening to the Megan. Listening to the Megan loving chattering classes, you'd be forgiven for thinking the poor dear and her loving husband were driven out of this godforsaken country by racism. <laughs> please, please give me commentariat because holy shit. That's going commentariat. I think I'm yeah. also going with commentariat on that one. Yeah, that's commentariat. That's the Daily Mail, I'm going to guess. Yeah. Express, got to be. Uh, it was actually it was everyone's favorite giant forehead, Brendan O'Neill in spite. Oh. <laughs> <Wow>. Excellent. Oh. <laughs> the the spiked magazine royal correspondent, fantastic. Oh, sorry, ex royal correspondent. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> All right, two for two. Let's keep going. All right. Enough of frightened rabbit syndrome. Everyone knows the score. It's time for people to be able to make up their own minds about what they want to do with their lives. Awesome. Comment. Mm. Frightened rabbits. That's seems. that's a that's a very uh, did Kid Starmer write this? I I <laughs> think that I think that's comment. I'm going with comment on that one. You know what? I will actually uh, as a solidarity for my fellow American. I will go comment, even in, especially if we're wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, go on commentary. At... Rob, uh, I think it's comment. Oh, it was a comment. It was uh, on a hey. BBC, BBC News article yes. about festivals reopening this year. About what <laughs> reopening? Festivals. <laughs> okay, of course. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to go to a fucking uh, plague festival where everyone not only has coronavirus, but every other communicable disease as well. <laughs> All right. The litany of disasters exists mainly in the minds of Labour slash EU supporters. People are pragmatic. You can be dissatisfied with the service at weight rolls, but it does not follow that you will change to Iceland. <laughs> <laughs> this is, this is commentary, definitely. It has to be, because they're talking about fucking weight rolls and derisively talking about Iceland. Uh, Iceland, yeah, Iceland being a supermarket, I also think not commentary. a country. Yeah, I just, yeah. just the tone of the language feels commentary to me. Yeah, commentary. This huh? person had an editor. Not a good one, but they had one. Good. Yeah, this is commentary, but Jesus Christ! <laughs> and Liam making the solidarity play again. Oh, I I was going with commentary. Yeah, I thought I said that. My bad. All right, that was a comment. Um, <laughs> oh, no. for a, for, nah, a point, for a bonus point, for a bonus point, does anyone want to guess what they're talking about in in that comment? When, God, you know, no. you can be, you can be dissatisfied <laughs> with the service Doctor of Wales. Spam. Uh, what else is British? Can you read it again? <laughs> Needing to be rescued by the American. Can you read yes. it again? Uh, uh, it was the litany of disasters exists mainly in the minds of Labour slash EU supporters. People are pragmatic. You can be dissatisfied with the service at weight rolls, but it does not follow that you will change to Iceland. NHS? It's definitely the NHS, yeah. Uh, you, you're close. It's about. It was on an Owen Jones article about how the government should be held to account for the 100,000 deaths due to COVID. <laughs> Oh, oh, fucking shit. hell. Oh, oh no. <laughs> just because... Oh, these, Come on. I, I, love the, I love the idea that there are people that hold these opinions, and they're just like, I was going to say walking on the street, but they're not really at the moment. But, like, these these are real people, presumably. Like, Yeah, well, I, I mean, they, they do have a point. You're not really going to change your death procurer, are you? <laughs> it's not something like you're going to phone up and stay on the phone to switch service, are you? I'd like to die in Iceland, please. <laughs> I don't know. I would like my Grim Reaper to wear the face of... Uh, Richard Branson when he comes. Like I think that's Size, just more personable damn. than the O2 logo. You can't actually afford death service. You just stay alive in a state of agony for eternity. <laughs> yeah, that's uh, pretty much the UK. <laughs> <laughs> like the, the US version of that is the guy turns up several times and takes a good long hard look at you and goes, no, sorry mate, I can't see what's killing you. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna... You'll have to phone up and rebook, I'm afraid, and leaves. <laughs> <laughs> right, are we ready for another? And they charge you a bunch for the ambulance. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> right. It's amazing the myth that slavery creates wealth still lives. The South was ex what the fuck? <laughs> the South was extremely poor 160 years ago because slavery was not a net plus economically. An extremely small portion of people had tons of slaves and were wealthy and lost it all after the war where millions of people died to end slavery. The idea that America was built on slavery is patently absurd. 
<laughs> I think I've read this. Well, I'm begging you to give is. me comment. I know it's probably not, but I am begging for this to be a comment. I think I this, think is, this com- is commentary. I think I think this. If, I, if I I'm remember sure it, right. it is. I'm I just... I may go with commentary just because I think that's what it is. Um, I think it's commentary, and I really wish it wasn't. Is this was that <laughs> insane um, Dan Hodges tweet thread where he said that 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 slavery had nothing to do with the Civil War? It's not. No. So what are you picking? Because he he'd read it because he because he he'd read Camp of the Saints, and that clearly says something very different. Well, what are you picking, Rob? Uh, commentary. I do think. Yeah, it's it's mad. Oh, well, Liam was Liam was the only one to get that right. It was a comment. Yes. <laughs> oh, on, a, on a Daily Wire article about reparations for slavery. Fuck Almighty! <laughs> <laughs> oh my God! Right, time for the big finish. <laughs> All right. The once great Washington Post is now just another outlet of newspeak. In an Orwellian twist, the Jeff Bezos-owned paper has morphed kids in cages into migrant facility for children. Throughout former President Donald Trump's four years in the White House, the mainstream media, like the Post, repeatedly cited kids in cages, claiming foreigners entering the U.S. illegally had their children ruthlessly snatched from them and shoved into cages. It was actually former President Barack Obama who started the practice. But that all that's changed now. First migrant facility for children opens under Biden, said the Post headline on Monday. But in another twist, the facility was actually opened by the Trump administration. <sighs> Commentariat. Well, I also commentariat. think commentariat. Yeah, commentariat. No, I'm going to hedge my bets. I'm going to say out. comment because then potentially I can co- draw even with Liam. <laughs> oh, that's right! Like gamb- gambling right it all on this one, this <laughs> yeah. one, one. Uh, yeah, spin oh. of a wheel. Go on, comment. Let's go comment. It kind of sounds like something that someone like Glenn Greenwald would write with that kind of brain worms. So I'm gonna say, <laughs> I'm gonna say commentary. Okay, <laughs> it was commentary. It was Joseph Curl at the Daily Wire. Oh, 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 damn. Oh, that's damn. A, you know what? You know what? I would have done it again too. <laughs> <laughs> People should not be allowed uh, to have these. Epi- well, no, actually, they were saying every- everything that was in that was basically correct. Um, but, <laughs> but that, but not what those guys are saying. It. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel you. <laughs> the worst guy you know just made a great point. <laughs> yep. Well, I think I think Liam was the outright winner there. Oh, it feels so good to be the winner. <laughs> Much like in all things. Yeah, no, but no matter who is to be expected. But no matter who wins, we all lose. Oh yeah! Oh, yeah, absolutely! We're fucked. We are. We all just live. It's it. It. It really is their island, and we just serve on it. Uh, well, yeah. I. I think. I think that takes us to the end. So, listen. Uh, thank you, Liam and Roz, for coming along tonight. It's been great fun. Well, and thanks for, uh, no, thanks for having us. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Do you have any plugs that you want to make whilst you're on here? Uh, you should listen to our podcast. Well, there's your problem. Is a podcast about engineering disasters, which has slides, and which, in and of itself, is a disaster. It's a disaster. It, we it's are really good. It's it really is good. very good. Yeah, I really like your Piper Alpha one. Um, especially, I, I'm got a background in chemical engineering, so it's very, very interesting for me. Ooh, fun! I, yeah, we. we uh, hey, I wrote that one. Thank you. Oh yeah, that was Liam. <laughs> that was Liam. I was all Mr. Anderson right there. I think if we're if we're talking if we're talking personal highlights of well there's your problem it's when Roz discovered that uh, oh Ruth Bader Ginsburg had died. Oh yes, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, that's that's the one where Liam got mad at me if, after the episode. Uh, <laughs> I did. I was not having a good day. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you know, if we're talking personal highlights, as someone who's got a degree in software engineering, I deeply appreciate you agreeing that it's not really engineering. So there's always that. <laughs> Yeah, well, a guy we used to live with uh, has a software engineering degree, and he is just about the biggest asshole I've ever met in my whole <laughs> life. So what do you think that deprives him of that and feeling good is the thing I want to know? Well, it's also, it is also 100% correct. Yes. But anyway, well, listen, thank you guys, and yeah. uh, thank you, our listener, for, for uh, hearing us this week, and tune in next time. Uh, bye for now. Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Uh, off it is then. Wrong. <laughs>